Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to start looking at what the earth is made up of, specifically the land under your feet. So if you're gonna make some cookies, you would use a recipe. You would take some butter and eggs and sugar and chocolate chips and mix them all up. But if you realize some of the materials you're using to make the cookies themselves have a recipe. For instance, how would you make chocolate chips? If you didn't have a chocolate chip, how would you go get one? What, what would you need in order to have a chocolate chip? So you're starting, if you, if you start breaking it down and realizing, well, what is this made out of? Now, what is this made out of? And you realize that everything that comprises anything, any matter at all, is gonna have a so, sort of a recipe. Well, that is the beginning of what we're gonna be looking in in geology. Geology is the study of not just the earth, geo means earth, but it's specifically the materials that make up the earth. So specifically the rocks, and what are the rocks made out of? We're gonna see that minerals comprise rocks. And we're even gonna look at in this lesson, what, do, what are minerals made out of? How do you compose minerals? So as we look at this, you're gonna see that a mountain may be weak or strong based upon the rocks that make up that mountain. And those rocks might be weak or strong based upon the minerals that comprise those rocks. And then whether those minerals are, are strong or weak have to do with the, com the composition of the atoms that make up those minerals. So as we look at all of it, little piece by piece, you're gonna start organizing all the stuff in the world um, in your mind, breaking it down into different ways so that you can look at it a little easier and classify it easier. We have to start then with the idea of a mineral. And a mineral is the building block of a rock. So a rock might have one type of mineral in it, or it might have a lot of different minerals in it. It might ha be a mixture of minerals that you can see or a mixture of mineral minerals that you cannot see. They might be blended so well that it seems to have its own color. A rock might seem to have its own color. It's strange though about a rock because the color of the outside of a rock isn't necessarily the color of the dust of that rock. If you were to grind that rock, you might see that the color is a little bit different. Sometimes colors are very shiny, almost like you know, metal, metallic, or glassy, or chalky. So what makes up a rock will be based upon what those things are that are in that rock are made up themselves. So in terms of human history, uh, mining has gone back ages. Uh, you, had, um, you had ancient cultures that would have gold and copper and silver this, um, they, they were treated as treasures uh, 4,000 years ago. Um, from the time of the Bronze Age, if you've heard of Bronze Age, it's when people realized that if you did a little bit of, of um, work with some of the copper that you could dig out of the ground, you could make it harder. And if you were to have, a, say, a spearhead or a, a sword that was made out of bronze, it could cut or, or uh, protect you better than one made out of just copper. So metallurgy started being developed thousands of years ago. So, so the, whatever country was better at developing bronze, for instance, would win in battle against those who, who hadn't that idea yet. Okay, so the smartest kid in class could probably stay alive a little bit longer in some cases. If you see the word mining and the word mineral is similar, it has, it has a, a root that's the same. So you have this idea that it needs to be dug. So you would have these ancient metals like lead, the Romans knew lead, um, all kinds of different uh, coin metals, ones that never, uh, that never uh, got scuzzy like, like gold. Gold would gleam and shine. Uh, even it would never really um, get tarnished or anything like that, like some metals would, like brass would. And then you, you could make all kinds of things. You could make pots and pans and all kinds of things out of these combinations um, as you learn more about how the minerals were made. So if you study minerals, whether or not you're trying to stay alive or you're trying to make a dollar, 
you are studying mineralogy. So if you're going to study a mineral, the first thing you need is to define what is a mineral and what is not a mineral. Everything you put in your hand is not going to be a mineral, and some of the things that may seem like a mineral or a rock may be neither of those. So first of all, we're going to have a definition that everyone agrees to, and then you, you can check to see whether something is a mineral or not a mineral. So the first thing is that it's naturally occurring. If you make a mineral in the laboratory, that does not mean that you're going to call it a mineral, even though it may have all of the other, uh, other def defining characteristics. If it's not naturally occurring, it's not considered a mineral. So a mineral is something you can dig out of the ground. It's not something that you can come up with uh, and make as a senior thesis. The other thing is that it can't have carbon in it. Uh, it's decided that, that a mineral is something that's inorganic. For that reason, coal is not a mineral. Coal is mostly going to be carbon, uh, a carbon compound. And so even though it certainly looks like a rock and it's all one type of material, so that rock would be like one type of stuff, so you'd think it's just a mineral, and you'd think of it as mineral resources would be uh, coal, but it's actually not classified as a mineral because it is not inorganic. It has carbon in it, so therefore it's not a mineral. Uh, the other more important thing is that it has to be a crystal. Okay, so for instance, anything that doesn't have a crystal shape uh, is not a mineral. Glass would not be crystal, even though it looks like a crystal. It, you, in fact, it even looks like what you would call a call crystal, uh, like a crystal goblet, because it has a very, um, it has a hardness and it has a shininess, has a transparency like other minerals would, but you're going to see that when you melt sand, the, the uh, structure of that material gets all wobbly, and so there isn't a definite specific shape to glass, uh, 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 like under a microscope where you could see it, glass always looks the same any portion of glass would look the same. Uh, glass is not going to look the same under a microscope because it doesn't have an orderly structure, so it could not be a mineral. So a lot of times you have to really look close to see what am I looking at. The last thing, it has to have a definite recipe. It has to have a specific chemical composition with exactly the same kind of ma matter in it in every sample. If it does and it meets all these other criteria, then we consider it a, a mineral. So to review, anything that's synthetic, something that's made, synthesized in a laboratory, is not a mineral. So you can make diamonds so that you can put them on, say, a saw blade, but that, that lab-grown diamond, even though it is still a diamond, is not considered a mineral because we didn't dig it out of the ground. And since that's one of our definitions, uh, we would not be considered. Okay? It has to be formed by natural geological processes in the earth. Also to review, if you have a chemical that was secreted by a living thing, like, a, like seashells, you have living things that secrete calcium carbonate and make seashells, and then those seashells uh, can be formed into, say, a piece of limestone. Well, the limestone is a mineral. It, it, it's the idea of the carbon base. Is it, is it, it carbon-based? If, if so, then it's not considered a mineral because it would be organic. If it's inorganic, uh, calcium carbonate in itself is inorganic, then it, would, it could be considered a mineral if it's naturally occurring. The next easy one would be that it has to be a solid. Okay? Minerals are solids, and there is one exception, and that is mercury. Me, uh, mercury metal at room temperature is a liquid. It's a very uh, dense liquid, uh, heavy in your hands. It's called quicksilver. Um, if you've ever played with it, it can cause cancer. Please don't play with too much of it. But it's a, um, it would be considered a mineral, even though it doesn't seem to have a crystal, uh, crystal structure.